what, what a performance. I just I could not be more proud of the players and uh, the coaches and the way they prepared this week. And, uh, you know, coming off an emotional win last week uh, against a team the caliber of UCF, uh, you know, that had really, you know, and Coach Mazan and I were talking, you know, before the game, you know, they should probably be undefeated coming in here. Uh, but, uh, you know, for our players and, and, and coaches, and I mentioned both because I thought all three phases, our coaches had tremendous game plans. They all worked together. We talked about how we wanted to play this game. You know, we wanted to control the ball on offense. We wanted to be aggressive and drive and score. If they played man coverage, we wanted to take shots. Um, we knew we had to try to limit the explosive plays defensively. Uh, we wanted to try to force the game into a drop back game for Plumlee. Um, special teams, you know, we were facing one of the top ranked kickoff return teams in the country. Uh, I just thought all three phases, everybody on that field and in those, you know, on those headsets, I just thought everybody did a phenomenal job. This week, I mean, it doesn't happen just tonight. It happens all week. And it was from the way the, the players and the coaches prepared all week. Uh, but, you, I mean, you could see. You could see the kids. They, they knew the game plan. They, you know, they were breaking. They were very, very aggressive defensively. Um, you know, the, the offensive line, you know, the way we were able to, you know, run the football, the way we were able to protect Holton. Um, and then, you know, pretty – Pretty pretty special performance by Holt Naylor's and C.J. Johnson. So uh, you know, 30 of 36 for 311, no turnovers, one touchdown. C.J. 11 catches for 140 and a touchdown. Uh, and there's so many. There's going to be so many, so many heroes from this game. I mean, it's you know Isaiah Winstead, Ryan Jones with big catches. It's it's Marlon Gunn with several big runs there uh, to keep drives going. It's Keaton Mitchell with another hundred yard game and kind of the exclamation point there at the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, but we talked this morning and uh, we said two things we wanted to see. We want to see the hands team have to take the field in the fourth quarter, and we want the last snap of the game to be the victory offense. And uh, you know what is what a celebration in there. I mean, it's unbelievable. Just really proud of the kids. Coach, it's, it's rare that you get a complete game for four quarters. It's, I mean, this is something you've been working for for, for four years. No doubt. I mean, that's, that, that's a, against a quality football team. You know, it's one thing to do it against, uh, you know, a 500 team or somebody like that, but to do it against, you know, one of the better teams in the country, one of the better teams in our conference, uh, it just – it's really a special win for the program. It's a special win for our players and our coaches. They find out why. <laughs> he, <laughs> coach was joking. He didn't mean to offend our fans by anything. So, uh, no, I just, I don't know. I'll tell you what, we're probably going to have barbecue tomorrow night for winter's dinner, okay? So I have to make a, a special request with one of our vendors out there to take care of it. But uh, what, a, what, a, what a great win for Eastern North Carolina. What a great win for this institution. And uh, I'll tell you what, our stadium, I just want to say thanks to the fans because that was electric. You know, it's it's one of those you, you want to. They stayed for four quarters, and it was rocking in the fourth quarter. It's it's you know when we when we got here and we started talking about the no quarter flag and what it meant, and you know, you know that being something we take pride in. That's what you envisioned right there. The turnovers you generated tonight, coach. If you talk about that, well, I mean that's that's a huge factor in the ball game. I think you know. You know, we go down and miss the field goal to start the game. They take the ball and drive it right back down. You know, if they score right there to go up 7 nothing or 3 nothing or whatever, it really puts them in control momentum-wise. But Jaira, you know, able to get that uh, interception right there was obviously a big start to the ball game. But, you know, uh, Malik's interception in the return was, was huge. Uh, the forced fumble on Plumlee. Uh, was big, you know, stopped another drive deep in the red zone. And then, you know, of course, the biggest of the night is Gerard Stringer with the, the interception to kind of seal the game. You know, it's, I didn't want to have to go back out there with the hands team again and, and go through all that. So I was really, you know, excited to see Gerard kind of put the game away for us. How much of that do you attribute to putting pressure on Plumlee? You mentioned trying to get him into that drop back game. Yeah. How much of the turnovers are, you know, are a result of, of doing just that? Well, I think it's a combination of, you know, being able to generate some pass rush 
and also uh, being able to show different coverages because we and we did we mixed stuff up a lot in the secondary. You know, we we did play a lot of zone, but we mixed up the types of zone we were playing. We were playing some two deep. We were playing some three deep. We were playing some bracket. Uh, we were playing some man two. So uh, you know, we 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 gave them a lot of different looks and tried to be in the throwing windows, which makes him you know maybe hesitate or pump the ball. Uh, but I thought that was you know that was significant. They have some really big corners. Knowing that you're going against them this week, did you guys work some extra roll one drills? Because you guys won, I think, almost every 50-50 ball. Well, I think number one, we we always do a one-on-one -on -one deal against our our guys middle of the week, uh, but we really did think that that was an advantage we had, and especially after the first couple of drives, um, you know, we just we said on the on the head. So there was a couple of times. I mean, they just flat zero out. Holton knows he's going to get hit. He knows where the ball's going right now, and it's a 50-50 ball to Isaiah or CJ, and our guys consistently made the big plays down the field, which that's that's the ball game. You know, if you don't make those plays, it really turns into a, a different kind of ball game. Coach, I do bring the house many times. Is, is this one of the better performances by the offensive line and, and Holton with his? Absolutely. I mean, when you when you force a a team that kind of prides itself on on you know, pressuring the quarterback and man coverage, when you force them in the fourth quarter to start playing drop eight and zone to keep from giving up those balls, I mean that's a great performance by that group. Coach, today the story of the game felt like it was the number five. Five on offense, CJ, amazing game. Five on defense, Wilson, everywhere at the right time. But most importantly, win number five on the season. No doubt. Looking back at the uh, state of the program when you arrived here a couple years ago versus today, coaching what could have been your most complete game of your tenure here at East Carolina, just uh, how does it feel to be a Pirate right now? Well, it's, you know, it, it's why we came here for games like this, and it's, the, the, but the kids, I mean, I was telling you, those players, you know, Noah Henderson, Holt Nailers, uh, Jaira, Gerard, Xavier, Miles, um, you know, all those guys that uh, were in the room uh, when I first took the job uh, that have been with the program and been such a huge part of the culture and the culture change. And, and now the, the, the winning, and now they're their leaders. And, uh, you know, that's, this is what you, this is what you, you want it to be like. And that's, you know, the, 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 the issue now is, now we've got to forget this, we've got a pretty short memory because we've got to go to the other side of the world to play uh, BYU next Friday night. So uh, we can't celebrate too long, but we're going to celebrate it for a little while. Yeah, I think that makes it uh, ECU 11, UCF 10. Uh, so the next time we see them, uh, it, it'll be in our favor, you know, before the game. And, you know, it breaks a little bit of a streak they had going with us. But uh, I think, I think get, getting the win at home in Daddy Ficklin, uh, that's, that's pretty special too. Coach, you, you kind of got emotional in the end zone there during the celebration part. Uh, is that just the culmination of your vision here? Well, it's – yeah, I, mean, I just – I have no idea how many hours we spend each week getting ready for a ball game, but to, to see the players go out and execute the game plans the way and to play the way you dream of them playing, it's just I'm just so happy for them. I'm happy for the moment. I um, mean, there's you know a lot of those kids were on the field when we had a big lead like that against Cincinnati in '19 and and you know screwed it away, and you know they've been on that field for the heartbreaking losses of South Carolina last year, NC State to start this year. And so to see us, you know, be able to, you know, make one not close at the end and kind of just punch our way through to a significant win, it's just, yeah, you get a little bit emotional. I mean, you, uh, you invest a lot. I mean, all, the, all of us do. We invest a lot in this program. And so it's, it means a lot to everybody in that room. Well, I think number one, I think they're a better team this year. I mean, I think they're much more explosive and uh, maybe better defensively. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of the the that, that's kind of the next thing we got to get to with the program is you know we've we've won a lot of close games, we've lost a lot of close games. You know, you're, every week you have a great shot to win, but now you know to be able to win games solidly against quality opponents, um, I think that's that's the next step the program is taking. So yeah, big one tonight. What do you think that? A win tonight in the manner that you beat a quality opponent tonight, what does that do maybe for the growth of this team and the confidence as they go on the road to take on a, a Brigham Young? Well, I think it gives us confidence against anybody. Uh, and I think that, to be honest, I think winning that game last week the way we did 
you know, that momentum and that confidence from that is why you had the preparation the way you did this week. I mean, that's, you know, it, it's, to, I'm telling you, to see those kids, I mean, they're, they're watching film at night. They're texting coaches at night about, about stuff in practice. And we, we don't watch the film with the kids till the next day. And they're, you know, they're, they're dialed into formation recognition. I mean, you know, that's why you saw them, you know, a lot just talking about certain alignments and stuff because they spent so much time preparing for it. So, um, you know, it's, I think this is a significant win because of the way the kids prepared. And I think that that motivation is, you know, it kind of reinforces to them when you, when you prepare yourself physically and prepare yourself mentally and prepare yourself from a, just a, 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 a you know, game plan preparation standpoint, you know, we're a dang good football team, you know, but you, but they got, you got to prepare that way. And I think that they continue to kind of reinforce that with the way they do throughout the week and then the way they're playing on game day right now. Well, I think it says a lot about a young kicker. I mean, uh, I asked if he was okay after that. I said, yeah, he just ticked off at himself. And then he came right back and nailed the next one. Uh, so, you, and I thought he, I thought he executed very well all night. Um, so I just think, uh, uh, I think number one, I think we punted one time tonight. I'll take that. Okay. No turnovers. Uh, that's just a, a pretty complete performance by everybody. So that's a good one. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you guys.